The thing is, is I think being open to critiques and really studying the art of animation and I think putting yourself out there, I think has really helped me as an animator at Disney. For me, especially on Tangled where there were human styled characters and we were going for subtlety and subtext and what the characters were thinking and animating what the character was thinking and not what the character is saying. I really felt like I need to shoot myself and kind of see subconsciously what I'm doing with my body and, and the posture and the gesture and my head tilt and what kind of accents I'm doing in the phrasing. For me, those are the little bits and pieces that help me kind of pepper in the realism in the characters. So I wasn't just animating to a big freeze or a big accent in the shot. I was trying to get in the character's head on a film like Tangled where, you know, everyone is so picky and the film is shot very much like a live action film where you have, you know, a wide shot, medium close up and you're looking at the character's eyes. That stuff is really hard to fake. So having the character feel like there's a soul in there and that the character's in the shot thinking, that's the biggest reason why I use live action reference. I think through, throughout my career, just always doing that and getting critiques and being open to it and having guys like Glenn Keane do draw overs over your shot and tweak and push and pull your poses. Because once you see a few of those draw overs, you start seeing a trend of what you're missing and what you need to do. So having, you know, having that base at Disney is really cool. Getting, being in dailies and hearing for the first few times that your shot's not working, it's so hard not to defend your shot and talk about why you did certain acting choices. The seasoned guys, you could tell who they are because in dailies, you know, they sit there, they get their notes, cool, I'll bring it back next time. And the next time they show in dailies, the notes have been addressed without all the hoopla and but it's like anything else, you know, you go through the pieces and, and you learn this stuff. I think in general artists, I think we're pretty sensitive to our work and hearing an outside opinion on, you know, if it's a critique from a friend or a co-worker or a fellow student. I think, I think initially it's really hard because you want to think your first pass at your, your blocking in your animation test is rock solid, that it's, I'm gonna blow people away. Like this is, I put so much thought into this, but getting extra eyes on it and just getting used to someone else's opinion and someone else having a say in your shot. Because when you get into a studio, you have to remember it's not your movie. You're making the movie for the directors, the studio, the producer, they have a say in it, and they're gonna craft your shot whichever way they want. The thing with building a portfolio or an animation reel is, in the beginning when you're learning, you're learning at such a fast rate that the scene that you animated a week or two before is already becoming outdated just because I feel like every scene that you do, you're always getting one to 2% better and you're getting all the bad scenes out of you. But the catch is you have to put some of that work on your reel to get a gig. So I always say, you know, animators look back at their work from previous films or their student reel and they think, holy cow, how did, how did I think that was good? But I think, I think that's great because, you know, I look back at some of the shots that I animated in previous films and I don't think they're as strong as they could be, but I think that's part of, part of the growth process is, if you look back at your student work and you think it rocks and you think it was amazing, <laughs> I think somewhere down the line you stop learning. So I, yeah, I think, I think the majority of animators that are working as professionals, I think they look back and their student reels are kind of, yeah, they're on the weak side. I think having other animators around, studying animation, I think they help push you. 
instead of, you know, I, I always thought if I was somewhere in New York, because none of my buddies were animators or wanted to study animation, I always pictured if I was somewhere in New York studying animation and then coming home in the evenings and not talking about it and not keeping that thread going after class and, you know, watching movies and talking about it, I always thought that would be, that, that wouldn't be beneficial to me. So coming out to VFS knowing there's gonna be 25 guys, we're studying animation, and we're gonna kind of hang out, talk animation 24 seven, and go through that boot camp style thing together. I, I, that, that's, that was the kind of the big deal for me. It feels awesome to be back and walking the halls of this school as a student and then being back many years later as a professional and walking the same halls it's pretty trippy feeling. It's, it's, really, it's really cool. It kind of puts things into perspective. Like when I see students in the class, I totally appreciate where they're coming from. That feeling of, I just want a chance. I just want someone to look at my reel and give me a critique. It's really cool to be sitting down with a student who's nervous and you know, they've been working on these shots for so long and they're finally gonna get their, maybe, you know, their, their first critique from an industry animator. And I totally appreciate that. It's, it's been really fun.